So what I'm doing now is just putting some tension on the bungee, giving it a powerful javelin style launch to give it the best altitude and speed possible. And releasing three, two, one. This is another way of releasing the model, which is what most people, non-competition flyers, tend to do. It's the safest, you've got the hand behind the, the wing, you can hold the tension. If you're launching for someone else, you can actually hold the leading edge of the wing, stop the model rotating and buffeting in the wind. But uh, this will just give a, a plain, straightforward launch in three, two, one, the Maxa in particular I find really nice to handle when you fly these things you don't want to be fighting the plane you want to be reading air you want to be circling it trying to find the core of the thermal you don't want to be fighting a plane that's dragging its tail or very twitchy or pitch sensitive and for me the Maxa just handles nicely and allows me to fly the air and not so much the plane. So what we're doing here is just feeling the air that it's flying in. The Max is quite light so it does climb very well and I'm just feeling that on the right side it's not climbing so well so I'm gonna drift a little bit more to the left side where I felt it was climbing better. and it's climbing a little bit better. When thermal turning, it's always about, again, reading the plane and just, where's the, where's it climbing the highest? Where's it most buoyant? And to try and hone your circles in on, on that point. Unless sometimes you get big thermals where you can, you can fly quite raggedly and in big circles and there's just lift everywhere. But sometimes you get little, little tight cheeky thermals that only small cores of lift and you just have to fly the plane into those cores and keep in the core. You'll notice we're getting further and further downwind here, or maybe you don't because you haven't got a ground reference, but thermals are just rising columns of air and they will drift with the wind. So when you're circling like the birds, like we're doing now, we've just got further and further downwind and we're just drifting with the thermal. So I'm mindful to take it downwind enough to not miss the thermal, because a lot of pilots will chase the thermal downwind and not go downwind far enough with it. Often the thermal can go downwind a lot further than the pilot, and you're always on the front edge of it. Most people can be guilty of it, myself included, big style sometimes, but always be mindful of just monitor your climb on all parts of the turn. Monitor your climb and see where you're doing the best and try and keep it in the best air. So we're quite a long way downwind now. And with some of these competition F3J planes, such as their aerodynamic performance and low drag and with the use of flaps, you can be flying a quarter to half a mile downwind in a thermal. Um, and what we'll do now, I think we've taken that nicely away what I'll do is bring it with some speed flap and what this is, is a little bit of camber reflex and you'll see we can come into come into the wind come forward very fast very easily and return back to the flying field after a big big thermal downwind. And we'll just line up for a landing. <laughs> <laughs> 